Saturday Night Live premiered almost 45 years ago, and since then, the show has given the world many comedic geniuses. SNL has continually delivered sketches and digital shorts that go viral, and the show owes its success to the creative people who pour their heart and soul into it. Unfortunately, when you put so many creative minds together and subject them to continued pressure, fights and arguments are bound to happen. Even the best SNL cast members have had rough days. In this video, we tell you about 15 fights that happened on Saturday Night Live. While some of these fights ended up in fist fights and punches, others turned into decade-long feuds. We'll bet you'll be surprised to know the reason why Chevy Chase and Will Ferrell have a mutual disliking for each other. Chevy Chase vs. Bill Murray Back in the 70s, Bill Murray or Chevy Chase, who's your favorite, was a common question, and fans often found it difficult to take sides. In 1976, SNL creator Lorne Michaels chose Bill Murray to replace Chevy Chase, the original anchor of the Weekend Update segment on SNL. Murray became a favorite of SNL fans in only a short amount of time, and Chase obviously had a hard time digesting this fact. Rumor has it that when Chase returned to host an episode during season three of the show, he and Murray got into a proper fight, and Murray's brother had to pull the two apart. Chevy Chase vs. Terry Sweeney Bill Murray isn't the only one Chevy Chase hated or offended. Ten years after he got into a Hollywood fight with Murray, Chevy didn't think twice before making fun of Robert Downey Jr.'s deceased father. The American comedian and screenwriter did not flinch once while saying on national television that Robert Downey Sr. had died and gone to hell. And he once again crossed all lines when he wrote a comedy sketch about Terry Sweeney, the first openly gay male cast member of SNL, getting AIDS. This time, Chase was so out of line, he had to apologize to Sweeney, which Chase didn't like at all. Chevy Chase vs. Will Ferrell Chevy Chase was not only one of the original SNL cast members, but also one of the biggest Hollywood actors of the 80s. His dry wit played a key role in winning him the love and laughter of audiences. So it's not surprising the legendary funny man appears to have receded into oblivion. We think the reason could be the number of people he offended. During the 90s, Chevy picked up beef with Will Ferrell after he had heard Chase making some questionable statements to female staff members, which bordered on sexual assault. Eddie Murphy and David Spade SNL played a key role in establishing Eddie Murphy's career as a comic artist as well as an actor. In fact, Murphy's character on the show was so famous that the creators of 30 Rock used it as an inspiration for the character Tracy Morgan. However, in an interview with Jerry Seinfeld, Murphy confessed he had only a few regrets in life, and one of them was yelling at SNL cast member David Spade. So what really happened between Spade and Murphy? Well, while doing a Hollywood Minute on Saturday Night Live, Spade poked fun at Eddie and called him a falling star after his A Vampire in Brooklyn tanked at the box office. The incident did not go over well with Eddie, who called Spade on the following Monday and let him have it. The tussle between David Spade and Eddie Murphy lasted years and was the main reason why Eddie stayed away from SNL for almost two decades. You may remember this as one of the most unforgettable showdowns on SNL, but wait till we tell you about the argument between Louis C.K. and Lorne Michael. So stick around. And meanwhile, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos like this one. John Belushi vs. Female Writers Female writers aren't funny. This statement is not only misogynistic, but also completely untrue. Over time, the women of Saturday Night Live have delivered one incredible comedy sketch after another, rightly earning the title of Queens of Sketch Comedy. However, John Belushi, being the misogynist he was, often rallied the women writers aren't funny idea on SNL, and even tried to sabotage the work of women writers. During an interview with Oprah, Jane Curtin, who rose to fame with her 1979-80 stint on SNL, shared with Oprah that women on SNL were not able to contribute their work because men often sabotage them. One such man was John Belushi. Chris Kattan vs. Norm MacDonald In November 1997, in an interview with Rolling Stone, Norm MacDonald made his feelings for Chris Kattan abundantly clear to the world when he called him gay and unfunny. In the same article, Kattan responded by calling MacDonald an asshole. However, how and why did things get so sour between the two SNL alums? 
In 2015, Catan shared that during their early SNL days, Catan and McDonald got into a bizarre argument during a pitch meeting. The meeting ended with the two calling each other all kinds of names. However, Catan later retracted this statement. Norm Macdonald versus the higher-ups at NBC Norm Macdonald was two very opposite personalities on stage and offstage. While in reality he was shy and quiet, he would set the stage on fire with his one-liners and perfect comic timing. For a time, he had the prized possession of anchoring Weekend Update, and although he did well, he did piss some people off. McDonald wouldn't stop mentioning the O.J. Simpson case, which rubbed many people the wrong way. The next thing he knew, lo and behold, he was out of the show. Anonymous SNL cast member versus an elevator operator Jane Curtin, who is often referred to as the queen of the deadpan, is one of the original cast members of SNL and has seen many comedians make the journey from being anonymous to audience favorites. According to Curtin, while some people take fame well, others take it to their head quickly. In an interview with TV critic Tom Shales, Curtin shared that an SNL cast member once punched an elevator operator in the face after the poor fellow made the mistake of asking the cast member for their ID. Unfortunately, Jane did not disclose the name of this anonymous cast member. Kanye West versus The Setup Crew It's no secret that celebrities are prone to overreacting and throwing fits. It's also no secret that Kanye West is an A-lister when it comes to throwing a hissy fit. Back in 2016, West was invited for an episode of SNL. True to his usual temperamental nature, the rapper created a scene with guns blazing when someone on the set moved a prop. He went up against the entire backstage, ranting how he wanted everything right so it could break the internet. Of course, we've left out some of his more explicit phrasings. Milton Berle versus the producers, cast, and crew. While many have caused scenes on the set of SNL, Milton Berle did something unique. He created such a ruckus that he was banned from the show, and the episode in question was never rerun. Back in 79, Berle was invited as a guest host on SNL. While it seemed great at the start, it went downhill very quickly. Burl hijacked the production, did something very unlike the show's format, and ended it with a staged standing ovation. Producer Lorne Michaels was against Burl from the start, but relented because an associate producer insisted it would go well. The most disturbing part of Burl's entire gig was he would walk around in front of everybody in his underwear and a robe. And he took it a step too far by whipping out his favorite body part when writer Alan Zweibel merely commented about the many jokes on Burl's manhood. Sherry O'Terry versus another writer on SNL. It's embarrassing when you behave in an unbecoming way in front of an idol, and Sherry O'Terry had the misfortune to experience this firsthand. On a certain day, O'Terry and her writing partner got into a huge brawl, and not the silent kind. When O'Terry walked off, she spotted Bill Murray, who she idolizes. O'Terry explained in an interview that the need for 90 minutes worth of content every week puts immense pressure on the writers, and at times the stress got to them. Luckily for her, Murray was a sport, and when she apologized for her behavior the next day, he assured her it was perfectly normal. Mike Myers versus Dana Carvey Mike Myers and Dana Carvey are extremely believable actors. As a viewer, you're likely to believe they're great friends, but the reality is far from it. In the 90s, both comedians were cast in a movie inspired by a Wayne's World sketch they had performed during the show. There were rumors Myers tried to ensure Carvey wasn't a part of the film, so there was no chance of him being upstaged. In another instance, Carvey said Myers stole his impression of Lorne Michaels for a character in another film. Janine Garofalo vs. SNL's Boy Club The mid-90s was a hard time as a cast member on SNL, especially if you were female. Performer Janine Garofalo said the environment on set was toxic, and one had to endure what was similar to a boys' club. She also mentioned she felt the writing was poor, and the sketches were homophobic and generally not up to standard. Comedian Chris Elliott also said the general environment on set was toxic. Between 1992 and 95, much of the cast left as a result of the unfavorable conditions. No one likes being underpaid, and the same is true for writers of SNL. Apparently, during the early 80s, the show's writers felt they were grossly underpaid and decided they wouldn't stay quiet about it. 
What ensued was no peaceful protest. They got riotous and behaved like an angry mob. When Michaels came to see what the ruckus was all about, they confronted him. And what did he do? Nothing. He just quietly walked back to his office, shutting the door behind him. Louis C.K. versus Lorne Michaels. Creator and producer Lorne Michaels and the comedian Louis C.K. had a disagreement when the latter was invited to host SNL for the second time. Louis wanted to do a 12-minute monologue, something that's not in line with the show's format, and Michaels agreed to only a 7-minute one. What followed was an angry explosion from Louis C.K. Michaels consoled him that no one had ever done a 7-minute monologue before, so this was already beyond the show's normal standard. When Louis remained unbending and threatened to continue on for longer on stage, Michaels put an end to it by saying that would be unprofessional. One would imagine that in an era where everyone knows everything, all thanks to the internet, celebrities would be more careful about getting into fights and scuffles. However, turns out writers and celebrities are just like everyone else. Sometimes they find it hard to keep their temper under check. Did you enjoy this video on celebrity fights that happen on SNL? Are there any we missed? If yes, let us know in the comments section. Meanwhile, before you sign out, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to stay updated about all our latest videos.